Shalom and welcome to this episode of Reboot. Reboot is a series of Hebraic teachings designed to help you in your journey back to truth. So we all have questions about what we are supposed to do in this Hebraic walk of ours. But we have the answers afforded to us in God's Word and truth awaits those who seek it. So what is Reboot? Reboot, much like a computer, is designed to fix a problem that we may have in our beliefs. So just like a computer, we are going to have to shut down and restart doing a reset, thus giving us a reboot. And resetting our beliefs will help us to, to create a better understanding of Torah. Okay, so let's get started with our teaching on time, the calendar of Yahweh. So what's time got to do with the calendar? Well, time governs just about everything that we do. We cannot escape time's influence. You would be hard pressed to find anything that is not affected by time. Our very existence is even determined by time. Life around us is governed by time. Our very world is ruled over by time. Even from creation, one of the first things mentioned is time. If we look at Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning, this is an element of time. If we want to keep the schedule of Yahweh's time in our lives, we must first look at His timepiece, which is creation. So before we get into time, we have to talk about the two kinds of calendars. We have man's calendar and we have God's calendar. So man's calendar is driven by the doctrines of man. And so when we have the doctrines of man, we have holidays such as Christmas and Halloween and Easter, Valentine's Day, New Year's Day. Um, and so these are not the holidays of God. They are not endorsed by, in Scripture. So if we look at Matthew 15, 9, it says, But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of man. So these holidays that are celebrated by the world, uh, they are the commandments and doctrines of man. So we have a warning in Jeremiah 10, 2, that says to keep away from these things. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the, hev the heathen are dismayed at them. So uh, our point here in this teaching is not to dive into uh, the truths of Christmas and Easter and Halloween and all these, other, um, all these other holidays of man, the doctrines of man. But, it, but at this point, it's, it's important to identify that these holidays are not biblically mandated, but they are the holidays that man has created um, in, his, um, in his absence of wisdom. So um, we, have, we have man's calendar, and, and now we look at God's calendar. Uh, in Leviticus 23, it says, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So this scripture is very important to look at because a lot of people will mistakenly call these feasts Jewish feasts. And these are not Jewish feasts. These are the feasts of God. And so we've talked about in another teaching, the first teaching, about uh, God's name is really a title. It's not his personal name. Um, and his name isn't really even Lord. Uh, if we open up a lot of our Bibles, the name Lord is a replacement for Yahweh, uh, yod heh vav -Hey. So when we look at this word, concerning the feasts of the Lord, we can replace that. Concerning the feasts of Yahweh, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So feasts may be a strange word to you, uh, convocations may be a strange word to you, but we'll learn about those together to know exactly what that means. So uh, the, the, uh, the feasts of Yahweh, His holy days, start off with the weekly 
Sabbath. So the weekly Sabbath is actually a, a, a holy, a holy uh, feast. It is the first feast that we keep every week. And then we move on uh, to Passover. So we can see by Scripture in Exodus chapter 12, verse 14, that Passover indeed is a feast in itself. We read in Exodus 12, verse 14, And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to, to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by ordinance forever. So Passover, as we see by Scripture, is actually one of the feasts. And then we have first fruits, and then we have unleavened bread, and we have Shaviot, and we have Feast of Trumpets, and Yom Kippur, and then we end with Sukkot. And all these are biblically mandated, biblically commanded feasts that are found in Leviticus 23. So let's get back into time. So we start off in Genesis 1-1 and we have the first element of time which is called the sun. And in Hebrew it is called the Shemesh, which is also called the greater light when we look at the account of creation in Genesis 1. So in Genesis 1, the sun is described as the greater light and it's that element that God created to rule the day. And this sun also determines the length of a day and brings on the arrival of the weekly Sabbath. So the weekly Sabbath is determined when the sun uh, sets. Um, so Genesis 1.14 says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So right here we have what the purpose of the sun is. Um, it is set there so that we can know what the signs and the seasons and the days and the years are. So uh, part of God's timepiece is the sun. And so we move on with Genesis 1.15 and it says, Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. So the sun is the greater light that rules the day. It, it, uh, it is the element of God's creation that uh, gives us the illuminance for the day. Uh, in Jeremiah 31, 35, it says, Thus saith the Lord, which gives the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divides the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. So we have these two element, these three elements of, um, of time and luminance, uh, one being the sun, two being the moon, and three being the stars. So the, the sun rules the day and the moon and the stars rule the night. So the second element of timekeeping that is found in Genesis 1 during the creation is the moon. And in Hebrew, this is called Kodesh. And the moon rules the night. So the Kodesh, uh, the moon, are, are going to be a big... Um, a big element of our discussion of time. Time, we're going to find, um, we're going to be going back to the word Kodesh, the moon. Uh, so, um, understanding the moon will also determine the understanding of when a month uh, occurs, when the beginning of a month is. So, the new month, the new moon will set the new month. Genesis 1.16 and 1.17, God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. So, uh, the sun and the moon's purpose is to give light onto the earth, okay? But another, another purpose of it is it establishes the length of a month and it sets the new month. Okay? So we have this in Genesis 1 16 and 1 17 that establishes what the sun and moon's purpose is. 
So now we have to get on to a new word, which is called the Moedim. And the Moedim are the appointed times. That's what Moedim means. So, before we get into that, let's establish a root word of Moedim, which is Moed. And Moed is a singular, a singular Hebrew word, means the appointed time. The appointed time. So whenever a feast occurs, like the Shabbat, that is called a Moed. That is one event. That is one appointed time. So when we're talking about the feasts of Yahweh, we are talking about the Moedim. And whenever you see the word Iim on a Hebrew word, that is a plural version of a Hebrew word. So we add Iim onto Moed, we have the appointed times. So the appointed times are the feasts that are described in the Bible. And there are seven appointed times ex set apart from the weekly Sabbath. The weekly Sabbath is also a Moedim, but it is not part of the annual seven Moedims. Is that clear? Cool. So we want to be careful not to miss the Moedim. If we want to meet with Yahweh on his appointed days, it's kind of like getting on a train. The train has a place to go to, and if we're not there when the train arrives, we miss it. So the Moedim is like a train. It's taking us somewhere. So the Moedim are coming, and you want to be on time, or you'll miss the schedule. Now, the Moedim does not happen the same time every year, that's because the Moedim are based upon the celestial elements that Yahweh created in creation. So the moon is a clock, much like the clocks we have in our house. Uh, a, a clock that we have in our homes will tell us what time it is so that we know that we can be at a specific place at a specific time so that we can keep our appointments. So the moon is God's clock. It tells us when the feasts are to be here. So in Genesis 1.14, we've already looked at that. Let's go back to it once again. And it says, And Yahweh said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and for years. So the, the sun and the moon's purpose is twofold. It says right there in the first part, it says that it will divide the day from the night. So we have the division of day from night with the sun and the moon. And the second person, purpose of the sun and the moon is to show us what God's signs and seasons are. The moon is a clock. And the clocks we have in our homes tell us what time it is so that we can be at a specific time for a specific event to happen. So God established his moon to be a clock for us so that we can know when to be at his Moedim, his appointed time. We look at Genesis 1.14 again. And Yahweh said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. So there we have the first of three purposes of the celestial bodies of the sun and the moon is to divide the day from the night. And we continue on and it says, and let them be for signs and seasons. There's the second pur purpose of the sun and the moon is so that we can know when God's appointed time is, the Moedim. And the third purpose is spelled out here in the final part of Genesis 1.14. And for days and for years. So now we can know that the sun and the moon work in tandem together to count down God's clock and to go through his calendar of the months and the days and the years. So if we look at the face of a clock, we can see that 12 o'clock can be seen as the new moon. 
the new moon is the conjunction of the moon and the tw six o'clock position is the full moon and in between the new moon and the full moon we have the three o'clock position which can be can be the quarter moon and then between six o'clock and midnight on the other side of the clock at the nine o'clock position we have another quarter moon so when we go from we go from 12 o'clock all around going clockwise all the way around to 12 o'clock again we reach the new moon again so we have one full cycle of the moon here it's all about time those who are not interested in keeping the sabbath or the feast of yahweh will not concern themselves with the calendar that yahweh has established through his uh, celestial bodies he created in creation is the calendar still in effect for us today and how does it relate to us in our walk with Yahshua the calendar establishes the time that we can meet with the king the calendar is like a clock a timepiece always ticking to the Moedim the calendar also points us to prophetic events so when we look at time we go back and we look at God's creation we look at Genesis 1 1 in the beginning Yahweh created the heaven and the earth so like I said before we have this in the beginning is an element of time in the beginning Yahweh created the heaven and the earth and Yahweh said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years so creation can be seen as the first Bible the very testimony of how the calendar is kept and tells the very beginning of the calendar story <clears throat> the Sun determines the weekly Sabbath the days the years and the weeks while the moon determines the appointed times and months so let's look at some things here moon also means month they are interchangeable words so moon and month mean Kodesh and we have this word called Rosh Kodesh which means new moon and so Kodesh comes from a root word that means to rebuild and so when we look at Rosh Kodesh we have two words to learn here Rosh means new or head and Kodesh means new moon and Kodesh Kodesh which is a primitive root word of Kodesh means to be new to rebuild to renew or to repair the seven day week starts off in chaos in darkness so when we look at the creation story we read how creation started off on the first day uh, Sunday it started off in darkness it started off in chaos but as it builds up from the first day up to the seventh day which is the Sabbath day the Sabbath day also is an element of completeness because seven is numerically linked to completeness and so uh, the Sabbath day ends the creation week so let's su summarize here F the first day of creation Sunday the first day of the week starts off in chaos and then as we go through the days of the week we e we end up in completeness and order and we have the Sabbath day Rosh Kadesh means the new moon um, so we already we've already established that Rosh means new Kodesh means moon or month so we can apply that to some other words that we know Rosh Hashanah which means the new year so we know Rosh means new Hashanah means year the seven day work week the seven day weeks starts off in chaos as in creation but ends up in completeness 
in order on the Shabbat. And so the new moon uh, starts off in darkness. And when you see the new moon, you'll see that, that there is no phase to it. It, it is in complete darkness. <clears throat> and Elohim said in Genesis 1.14, Let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years. So we've already established that Moedim means appointed times. So the sun, moon, and stars are in effect calendar tools. <clears throat> so let's look at this moon conjunction. Now a lot of you out there in, he in Hebrew roots or Messianic circles um, will have a disagreement with what the new moon is. Or you may be in agreement. Uh, there are two ideas of wh what the new moon is. The first one would be the crescent or the sliver moon uh, starting off the new moon cycle, thus starting the new month. And the other idea is the, the moon, the new month, new moon rather, starting off in darkness, um, which is the conjunction of moon. So um, the moon conjunction is the viewpoint that I'll be teaching from. So let's take a look at that. The moon conjunction is also known as the invisible moon phase. A new moon occurs when the, when the moon is between the earth and the sun. So you have the sun on one hand and the earth on the other hand and the moon comes right in between the two and they're in a line. A, they're complete parallel. So we have what is called the moon conjunction. And when the moon is in conjunction, we have 0% zero zero illumination. So if you look at a moon program, a program that will predict when the phases of the moon will occur, you'll also see that it has a percentage in illumination. So when we get into uh, the, the moon conjunction, it is 0%. Whereas when we get into the sliver or crescent moon, we get into like a 1% illumination. It's very, very minute, um, kind of hard to see and de determine when that is, unless you're really, really uh, diligent in, in, um, in observing it. So we have the 0% illumination of the dark moon. And so we already discussed that the moon is its own source of light. That may be contrary to what a lot of us have been taught, where um, the um, moon uh, receives its light as a reflection from the sun. But uh, we look in creation, we see that God created the moon and the sun to be its own sources of light. So the moon is turned in the Bible as the lesser light. And uh, the lesser light, the moon, uh, with its own light source, doesn't get its illuminance from another light. It's its own source. So the new moon is defined as the renewal of the moon. So the moon has a cycle that it goes through every month and lasts the exact same amount of time. And it, then it renews itself. But it doesn't happen on the same day of, say, our Gregorian calendar. So when you start keeping the uh, calendar of Yahweh on the moon cycle, um, it's not going to happen the same day on your Gregorian calendar or the calendar that hangs on your wall that is going to be different from month to month, from year to year. And that's why the feasts don't happen the same day every year. So the moon conjunction is when the month is renewed. The moon is for the Moedim. So when we, when we look to see when the Moedim, the appointed times of Yahweh are, we have to look to the moon to determine that. In Jeremiah, 20, uh, Jeremiah 31, 35, it says, Thus saith the Lord, which gives the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night, which divides the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. And in Psalms 104.19 it says, He appointed the moon for seasons. Those are the appointed times. The sun knows 
is going down. What is time? The measured or measurable period during which an action, process, or condition exists or continues. A duration. It is also defined as a non-spatial continuum that is measured in terms of events which succeed one another from past to present to future. Time can exist in a linear or non-linear fashion, meaning that time doesn't always have to happen consecutively in order um, such as like going from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 through 10. Uh, time can go from 1 to 10 and then go back to 5 and then go back to 10 again. So uh, it can happen in both um, ways. It can happen linearly and non-linearly. In fact, when you look at Bible prophecy and you compare them to the feasts, we see that there is a cylindrical pattern that things happen that, that once happened in the past, they happen again. So there we get the existence of nonlinear time. Time can be seen as seen as a closed loop with various points of interaction and events. And time can happen in a cylindrical or repetitive pattern as well. So time exists as a closed loop and it also uh, exists in a repetitive pattern. Time is cylindrical in that time can repeat itself without having a necessarily finite existence of events that is confined to one occupancy of time and space. Many events in the Bible can and will occur in a cylindrical pattern. Go back to the beginning to understand the end and from beginning to end the pattern will be the same and cylindrical. So time, let's look at some elements of time. Time is comprised of hours and days and weeks and months and years and all these will fit in to the feasts or the Moedim of Yahweh. So we also have to look at the Aviv or the Abib of the, harv the three harvest times of the year in the Bible, which would be the barley harvest, the wheat harvest, and the tree harvest. And these, the, the Abib refers to the agricultural maturity of the harvest. Um, also, we have to take a look and consider the equinox of when the sun is um, over the earth. And we'll be looking at the equinox a little later. Um, the equinox establishes the, um, the time when things grow. And, and so when things grow, we can um, know when nature is telling us that Yahweh's Moedim are coming near or have arrived. Um, we also can take a look at prophetic events to be fulfilled through the elements of time. Uh, uh, this can be both the prophetic events that have been fulfilled and will be fulfilled. We'll see that there are some feasts that have been fulfilled and some that are, are still waiting to be fulfilled. And time also works within cylindrical patterns. And we have the solar and lunar calendars working together. So the solar being the sun and the lunar being the moon are working together to um, to fulfill God's calendars that are happening throughout the year.